the potential due to a hollow charged cylinder. <clears throat> a hollow thin walled insulating cylinder of radius capital R and length capital L, like the cardboard tube in a roll of toilet paper, has charge capital Q uniformly distributed over its surface. Calculate the electric potential at all points along the axis of the tube, take the origin to be at the center of the tube and take the potential to be zero at infinity. So we will only do part A of this problem. So here is our hollow tube. We're considering a charge element here, dq, and that's basically this ring. And then we will calculate the potential due to this ring and integrate over the z-axis. Now we have a surface charge distribution, uniform ch uh, charge distribution. That means the surface charge density sigma is the total charge Q divided by the surface area. Surface area of the cylinder is 2 pi capital R, the circumference multiplied by the height, the total length L. And the charge, the infinitesimal charge we will have in this region, dq, will be equal to sigma multiplied with dA. So this is sigma times dA, the area. The sur surface charge density is Q over 2 pi RL, Q over 2 pi capital R capital L, and the area is 2 pi capital R dZ prime. Okay, so uh, basically, let's say that this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. This ring is at position z prime on the z-axis. So when I change z prime a little bit, I have this ring with thickness dz prime. So the area is the uh, area of this uh, infinitesimal cylindrical region here, which is 2 pi r dz prime. Okay. So this tells us that dq is q dz prime over l because the two pi r's will cancel. Now what is the potential due to this dq? It is k dq divided by d now, d is the distance from this infinitesimal charge to the point of interest on the z-axis at location z. So, this is at d. Notice that all points on this infinitesimal charge have the same distance d. So, it is k dq over d is the potential due to this infinitesimal charge. Now, I see that uh, I have a relationship between d z minus z prime and capital R, d square is r square plus z minus z prime squared because of this uh, right triangle here, the Pythagorean theorem. So this is going to give me d square is equal to capital R square plus z minus z prime square. So the potential dV is then going to be k dQ divided by z minus z prime square plus capital R square square root when I substitute for d, the result from the right triangle. So that means the potential V will be uh, the integral of dv, which is k capital Q over L. For dq, I'm substituting q dz prime over L. So k capital Q over L. Uh, integral, the z prime will go from minus capital L over 2 to plus capital L over 2 dz prime divided by r square plus z minus z prime square square root. 
okay so that's going to be the potential i will go over all of these z prime values from minus l over 2 to plus l over 2 to cover all of these uh, infinitesimal cylinders that will give me the total potential at location z so in order to perform this integral let u1 is equal to z prime minus z so that du1 is equal to dz prime and you can also notice here that if you plot this right triangle uh, we have a relationship between r u1 and and y the new variable that i will use later on so let's keep that in mind the potential v is then k capital q over l integral from u1 minimum to u1 maximum dz prime is just du1 and, and then i have here square root u1 square plus r square now u1 square plus r square is equal to y square according to this right triangle so i will have a, a new transformation to the variable uh, to a new variable now you can see that from this right triangle tangent theta is uh, u1 over capital r so i will use that transformation um, let's see tangent theta is u1 divided by capital r which means capital r secant square theta d theta is du1 and at the same time i have y cosine theta equals capital r or y is equal to capital r divided by cosine theta where y is square root of u1 square plus capital r square that's what i see from this triangle y is square root of u1 square plus r square and y cosine theta is capital r so with that transformation now my potential becomes v is equal to k capital q over l integral for du1 i will substitute capital r secant square theta d theta and for square root of u1 square plus r square i will substitute y which is capital R divided by cosine theta. You can see that these capital R's will disappear and my integral will become potential is equal to K capital Q over L integral uh, cosine theta multiplied by secant uh, square theta is cosine theta d theta divided by cosine square theta 1 over cosine square is secant square so this is k capital q over l capital l integral of d theta over cosine theta because one of the cosines disappear now i will multiply top and bottom with secant theta plus tangent theta so k capital q over l integral so let's multiply top and bottom so one over cosine theta is secant theta now i have secant theta plus tangent theta d theta 
divided by secant theta plus tangent theta. All right. So if I distribute this, I will obtain potential is equal to K capital Q over capital L integral secant square theta plus secant theta tangent theta divided by secant theta plus tangent theta d theta. Now I'm going to call secant theta plus tangent theta my second transformation to u2 variable u2 so that du2 will become sine theta divided by cosine square theta plus secant square theta d theta. So secant is 1 over cosine. Derivative of 1 is 0 multiplied with cosine minus the derivative of cosine is minus sine. Uh, so it becomes sine divided by the square cosine square sine theta over cosine square theta. So this gives me du2 equals sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta. So 1 over cosine theta is secant theta. Secant theta tangent theta plus secant square theta d theta which is what I see on top here. <clears throat> so the potential becomes K capital Q over capital L integral du2 du2 over u2. So that integral is natural logarithm. So that will be K capital Q over L over capital L natural logarithm of u2 which will be evaluated between minimum and maximum values of u2. Now I will substitute um, for this the u2 variable which is k capital Q over capital L natural logarithm of u2 was secant plus tangent so secant theta plus tangent theta and that is equal to k capital q over l capital l natural logarithm secant theta is 1 over cosine theta which is remember that y cosine theta was r so 1 over cosine theta is y over capital R and tangent theta is u1 over capital R. So going back to this triangle here, cosine theta is r over y, 1 over cosine theta is y over r, tangent theta is u1 over r. So that's what I substitute here. Okay, now uh, y is square root of r square plus u1 square and also recall that u1 is uh, it was defined here as z prime minus z so let's continue the potential at a distance z from the center is k capital q divided by capital L, natural logarithm, y over r, well y is square root of r square plus u1 square divided by capital R plus tangent theta u1 over capital R. And now I substitute for u1 z prime minus z. So it is k capital Q over L natural logarithm 
um, r square plus z prime minus z square square root plus z prime minus z divided by capital R. And this will be evaluated between z prime equals minus L over 2 and z prime equals plus L over 2, the limits. And this will allow me to write my final answer. Potential at a distance z is k capital Q over capital L natural logarithm now i'm substituting for uh, you want uh, for z z prime r square plus l over 2 minus z square square root plus l over 2 minus z the upper limit and then the lower limit, r squared plus l over 2 plus z, parenthesis squared, minus l over 2 minus z. And here I have another square root. And this completes the calculation. So this is our final answer for the potential at point C. All right, so we calculated the potential due to a hollow cylinder by considering infinitesimal charges dQ, which is sigma dA, where sigma is total charge Q divided by 2 pi R L, the uh, surface area of this hollow cylinder. Uh, dA is just dz prime multiplied with 2 pi capital R. So we find dQ is capital Q dz prime over L, uh, L. And dV, the potential due to this one at a location z on the z-axis, is uh, k dQ over d, the distance between the infinitesimal charge and the point of interest where I want to calculate the potential. And I know this relationship z minus z prime square plus r square is d square. When I write this integral, it will be evaluated between minus l over 2 and plus l over 2. So I will have these uh, infinitesimal cylinders everywhere. Uh, and in order to perform this integration, I had to do a few tricky transformations. But finally, uh, I find that it is k capital Q over L natural logarithm of this uh, quantity square root of r square plus l over 2 minus c square plus l over 2 minus c which is divided by square root of r square plus l over 2 plus c parentheses squared minus l over 2 minus z.